Hi, welcome back to the second part of this 3D AutoCAD tutorial where we're building a small simple architectural space. We've completed the glazed screen using 3D faces, a uh, very flexible modeling component, uh, but it's laborious, it takes time to, to do what we did. Let's look at a much faster method of modeling which is to use solids and we'll do that with this door feature over here. So I'll get in closer. You can see the door is this rectangular shape here. We have a frame going up and over and we've got a space above the door for glazing in what we call a fan light. Okay, I'm just going to adjust uh, a couple of these panels so we can see my layers list. Get rid of these. Okay, I can see my coordinates. I can't see my layers yet, so I'm going to drop out the selections panel as well. And also the section plane one. Won't need that just now either. So I can see my layers list. That's what I want to see. Okay, so we'll work on a layer called 3DRFR. Okay, and what we're going to do is create two polylines, one for the what would be the base piece of glass and one for the frame. And we'll, sub, we'll extrude both these polylines and then subtract one from the other to leave a more complicated shape. Okay, it's a much quicker way of modeling using these boolean commands to either add or subtract or, or intersect shapes with each other and we need to use polylines so that we get clean solids generated. So we'll create the polyline. Another advantage of a polyline is that it doesn't change its depth and for a solid to be created the points for the for the shape have to be coplanar. Okay, so I'm going to trace around this shape. Pick one, two, three, Four, this is the last point before I come back to where I started. So rather than picking that point when there might be an error involved, I close the shape. Okay, the next shape is going to be a bit more complicated. So get the polyline. We're going to go up and over the top of the original shape, back down, and then we go on the inside instead. So we're coming very close to where we started now. Here's the last click before we get home and we close the shape. I'm just going to copy one of these to the side so you can see what happens when we extrude an object that isn't closed. Okay, so it's still a polyline, but this one's had a break cut into it. Okay, let's extrude them now to turn them into solids. So extrude and You'll be picking just the two. I've got a third one here for demonstration purposes. Press enter. Drag towards you. You can already see that the other shape is looking pretty strange. And we want an extrusion height of 100 millimeters. If we shade this, you can see that this is all being filled in. It looks solid, whereas this looks very strange. It's a meshy type appearance on the sides and it doesn't have top or bottom. Back to 2D wireframe. So this is of no use to us. So let's delete that object. And to create an aperture here, to create a hole, we want to subtract. So subtract from the bigger shape, return, pick the smaller shape, return. Test it with shading looks good, nice and clean. Back to 2D wireframe. We'll move on to the door shape now. So you see how quick that was to create. The problem is it's not very editable. It's very difficult to do anything with this. There's basically no points here that I can pick on. Editing the solids further is, is much more work. Okay, so let's change to the door leaf layer now. 3DR leaf and we'll switch off the door frame temporarily. 
Okay, we're tracing over these two rectangles with fresh rectangles. Get the rectangle command from endpoint to endpoint. Return to bring back the command from endpoint to endpoint. We'll extrude these now. So extrude them both at the same time. Return. We're coming this way by 50 millimeters, half the thickness of the door frame. We subtract from the outer shape, return, pick the inner shape, return. Check that it looks like a door, we shade it, it looks like a timber door, back to 2D wireframe. Let's bring back on the door frame now, and we're just going to move the door forwards by its own thickness so that it sits in the correct position for its hinge point. So we want to move, so it's M, return, pick the door and return, base point, destination point. Let's move both of these now into position on the plan. So press return to bring back the move command, pick both parts of the door, return from end point. We carefully choose the corresponding point on the plan. Okay, so that's the two tricky parts done. We're going to move now onto the ceiling plane. So this is probably the most sophisticated part of the of the uh, modeling tutorial. So I'd like to change layer now to three wall two, a nice bright yellow, so we can see things on the screen grab. I can freeze these layers now. We don't need to see these objects for a while. So we can freeze both of these two and these three. Escape. Let's twist around so we get a better view of the model. Okay, so we're looking kind of more at the interior then. So what we're going to do is set up some lines that define the height of the ceiling. So we'll use polylines again because they don't change their depth. So it's polyline, we need ortho on this time. And your first polyline is going to come from this position here. Okay, ortho is restricting it. Drag it up so that it's much higher than the section. Return, return to bring back the command. Let's draw another polyline from this position. Okay, drag it right up, return again to bring back the command from this position this time, drag up and click again, return to finish. Okay, now if if this line here were a, like a flat blade, like a guillotine, it would operate in this direction, it would cut backwards into the plan because the cutting happens in the Z direction. Okay, even though the line is defined in an XY plane, the cut is kind of a depth thing. So it's cutting backwards into the drawing. So see what happens when you use this as your trimming line. TR, return, pick this object and return. Even though it's locked, it still lets you use it. And you can see that these are trimmable. One, two, three. Return to finish. So they should be all different heights because they're going in this direction. It's getting higher as we come towards the front of the building. Let's see that from this side view. We're in the front coordinate system, so let's do plan and return twice. And there you see the yellow lines are exactly the right height. They take us to the underside of the ceiling. Okay, back to your 3D view. There's not enough of the lines here for us to do much work with, so let's copy them into the various corners and other positions that we need. Let's deal with this one first because there's only one duplicate of this. So CP, return. Take ortho off if you want. Pick the yellow line and return. 
base point is at the bottom of the yellow line and we copy it to here. Return to finish. This line gets the most copies. We need five more of these. Return to bring back copy command. Pick the line and return. Base point and then it's one, two, three, four, five. Return to finish. This line gets three duplicates. Return to bring back the command. Pick the line, return base point, destination, destination, and final destination. Nothing to do with the film franchise. Okay, that's covered most of the interior, but we've got a problem when we get to the window. We haven't got a position to define this wall in particular. So let's draw some more polylines over the top of the section and we'll move these into position. So we'll go from the top of the window right the way down to the ground, return, another one, effectively the window frame width away, so this line's slightly longer, return, return to bring back the command, and then a final one along the front, which is mainly for exterior use, but we'll get to that later. Return to finish. Copy these three new yellow lines, CP, return, 1, 2, 3, return, from base point to destination point, return to finish. Okay, save my file there, just so I don't lose anything. Okay, we've now got sufficient 3D setting out points for us to work on the ceiling. Uh, the ceiling's quite tricky because it's in, the, it's in a sloping plane. It's not just a horizontal, not just a horizontal kind of rectangle. It's a sloping shape and it's quite a tricky shape. It's going in and out from these points. So let's change to the ceiling layer. And we're going to change the coordinate system altogether. None of the ones, none of the named ones would work for this because they're not at the correct angle. We need to be working in the plane of the, the roof. So instead of from, instead of picking from the menu, we use a three point coordinate system. It's asking me for the origin point. I'll pick here. Which, it's now asking which direction is X going to be in. This would be the most common, convenient point. And which way is Y pointing? This would be the most convenient point, but you could pick any of these because they're all positive in the Y direction at the right angle. Okay, now can you see that the yellow, the yellow Y axis here is parallel with the underside of the roof. Okay, we'll trace around now using a polyline Let's start here, go up to here. If you put ortho on, you'd see that it's hitting these points exactly. It's not just accidental, it's exact. So ortho could be on or off, it wouldn't matter. Come across the top of the window head, down the slope of the roof to the corner, Run back along here, along the low side of the roof, over to this side of the door, and then remember to close your shape. So close the shape. Okay, if we shade that, you'll see there's no there's no solidity to it yet. And we use the region command. So R E G, return. Pick the closed polyline and return. When it's successful you get this message one loop extracted one region created. Shade it now and we'll have a solid ceiling. Okay, For a region to work correctly the points have to be coplanar. They're all in line with each other looking 
in this direction. Okay, we'll stop at that point because that's a convenient position and we've done the ceiling. In the next clip, we'll move on to the walls.